This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Wireless mice may not have the best reputation in the gaming industry because they simply cannot give us the same confidence as wired mice for gaming. But that soon might change because they are improving, latency is decreasing, and it almost feels like we are gaming with a wired mouse. And uh, they might be coming good enough for the semi-competitive arena. The Razer Mamba Chroma is on the review table today, which Razer claims to be the best wireless gaming mouse. And after just putting my hand on it and going through a quick CSGO match, I was super pleased with the ergonomics and build quality. The body of the Mamba Chroma follows in the footsteps of previous Mamba mice and also uh, a hint of Death Adder in there, which many gamers love, with the pleasant rubberized textured grips on each side. The slight curve on the right side for extremely comfortable hybrid claw slash palm grip, but not really usable for finger grip, and very well placed buttons uh, for natural reach without affecting the grip. The side browser buttons have soft but distinct actuations. The scroll wheel is fantastic with great texture and solid scroll steps with quality side clicks as well without activating any scrolling. The two DPI shifts behind the scroll wheel are perfect for quick sensitivity changes with fine actuations. Although I find the lower button to be slightly too far for my point finger, so I just set the top DPI button to cycle between one to five stages of sensitivity and this way I never have to use the bottom button. The primary left and right clicks are satisfactory and you can change the resistance on each click with this included tool which is an awesome way to customize each click from 45 grams to 95 grams for either really fast actuations in mobile games or add a little travel distance that in turn adds a bit of resistance and makes the actuations slower which is fine for sniping or non-intense clicking genres. Each of the rotation steps can be felt and configured accurately for each click and that's highly appreciated. Also, the difference between the minimum and maximum tension on the switch is really minor and probably will be left untouched by majority of users. Now the Razer Mamba Chroma is a hybrid mouse for both wireless and wired mode. I love the design of the included charging dock that is also your receiver that elevates and angles the mouse for beautiful showcase plus the ambient underglow of the base is just gorgeous and it actually helps to reveal the base in totally dark setting if you're looking to charge the mouse. It is magnetic and you can set a charging color for the LED just as a confirmation that the contacts are properly aligned. The lighting on the mouse is also beautiful with curved slim strips on each side that are illuminated in seven zones. Plus the scroll wheel is brightly lit up and both of these sections are independently controlled. The Razer logo on the body is very discreet and not illuminated, which is totally fine to preserve battery life. At the bottom of the mouse, you'll find an on-off switch that is in charge of power only for the wireless mode. Pretty large Teflon feet with two at the front and one at the back, plus at the front a micro USB port to use the Razer Mamba with a cable. And I think up to this point everything has been fine and dandy, but I would love to see a tiny USB receiver that I can plug into my laptop and take the mouse with me on the go without having to bring the large base. Okay, so now onto sensor performance and my experience in wireless and wired mode. Having the mouse plugged in brings my confidence to 100%, knowing exactly where my aim would go. And this new 16,000 DPI Philips laser sensor is actually really adequate. I don't move the mouse much when I game and having the DPI at 1050 gave me accurate tracking and no frustration whatsoever with any jitter or acceleration. Surprisingly, the gaming experience in wireless mode was just as satisfactory, but not without minor issues here and there. First, from what I can tell, there is no noticeable difference in latency or input versus wired mode, and despite the cable being very light, I found the mouse handling and motion to be a little bit more pleasing in wireless mode because the cable was not part of the body. So if you are gaming in a confined environment, having the dock right in front of you is in wireless mode is perfectly fine. But move that dongle two meters away and now you have all types of sensor issues, laggy performance, skipped sensor performance, and it's just not acceptable. So you cannot use the Naga on the couch with the dongle two meters away uh, near the computer. Disappointing. 
I also experienced a few really bad input lag scenarios in gaming menus, but after switching the USB port, input lag was never an issue unless the distance factor between the mouse and the dock increased. Now, battery life should not be an issue with overnight charges. Full day gaming marathons will leave plenty of juice for the week. Uh, the Razer claims to have 20 hours on tap, and that's perfectly fine. And overall, the combination of excellent ergonomics and personalized actuation force on the primary switches with outstanding sensor makes for one unique wireless mouse. But furthermore, the Razer Synapse software offers plenty of customization of each of the buttons. Obviously, DPI sensitivity is there, up to five stages and 50 DPI increments. And not sure why acceleration is even an option, but there, there is. Plus, the polling rate up to 1000 Hz is there. The lighting tab gives you five effects that you can either sync with the dock or create the lighting mode for the dock separately and adjust the brightness for wired and wireless modes independently, plus the ability to switch off the lighting when your monitors are off, which is unpredictable in my experience and powering on my system after sleep, the mouse lights were not working until I restarted the system and the morning after, one of the sides was just not in the sync with the rest of the colors until I accidentally press the right button and everything just went back to normal. It is a bit buggy and we're not the only ones with these issues. You can read up online. Entering the Chroma Configurator adds all new lighting customization on the mouse with seven separate zones on each side that can be an awesome way to customize your peripherals for your team and Razer has done a fantastic job both with smooth color shifts and consistency of color. However, I've discovered a terrible bug when Chroma Configuration is on in wireless mode, you get this terrible input lag and skipped sensor readings. So I don't know why that happens, but uh, maybe it should just be disabled completely for wireless mode. In the power tab, you can set when the mouse goes to sleep and if you're not checking the battery status through the software in the top right, you can set the low battery blinking indicator on the scroll wheel. And finally, in the calibration tab, you can configure the sensor based on the surface mat and set your liftoff distance. And because the Razer Synapse software is the hub for all peripherals, you can record macros which will sync to all other compatible Razer products. But here's the caveat, there is no built-in memory on the mouse, so you must register for the driver software in order to gain all the customization options. So in the end, am I happy with the ergonomics and wireless performance? Absolutely, I think this is the best wireless mouse that I've used so far. But wireless range is terrible and don't expect to use the Chroma Configurator in wireless mode because that introduces so many issues. And honestly, I want to give the Razer Mamba an award uh, simply because the ergonomics are so excellent and the same thing goes for the sensor performance. But in that case, uh, you might as well just pick up the Tournament Edition, which is half the price. It offers the same performance, same ergonomics. And the only thing that is missing there is uh, it doesn't have the wireless mode and also you cannot adjust the resistance of the switches. But this is it for this review. I hope you enjoyed and let us know your thoughts on wireless pro gaming. Would you ever do it? I'm Dimitri with Hyra Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more gaming content like this and we'll see you in the next one.